Espresso Patronum! <laughs> this is my favorite! Hi guys, so as I have mentioned in a few videos before, I wanted to do a video on my experience with rereading the Harry Potter books. So that's what I'm gonna do today. First of all, I wanna say that I'm only gonna talk about books three to seven. I read the second and first book two summers ago. Oh my God. Anyway, I read the first and second book for the first time because back then I only started reading the series after the second movie came out and then just started with the third book. So so I feel like I have a very different experience with the second and first book than I have with these because these were rereads and these were kind of the nostalgic books that I read back then. So I'm just gonna completely leave out the first and second book. And I also wanna mention that I always really loved Harry Potter, but I am definitely loving it less than a lot of other people my generation or on booktube. I am the one who says she'd rather live in Middle Earth than in Hogwarts. I've never been the biggest fan of the Golden Trio. My favorite character is Severus Snape. <laughs> We're gonna get into that. Don't shout at me yet. <laughs> so I've always been just someone who really appreciates the series, but when people were asking me about my favorite series, it was never really something that I would mention, or at least not after I joined booktube. There's just series that I have a lot more feelings for, but obviously I still appreciate and love Harry Potter. It's still something that's very nostalgic for me, but I just kind of want to go into this saying that I think it just means a little less to me than it means to other people. Now I talked a little bit about my ranking already in my wrap ups when I finished one of these books, and now that I read all of them, I have a final ranking. I have given Order of the Phoenix, Goblet of Fire and Prison of Azkaban five stars and half Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows only four stars. These were definitely my least favorite books. I think my ranking at this point would be lowest to highest. half Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows, Prison of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire and Order of the Phoenix. Although Goblet of Fire and Order of the Phoenix and also Prison of Azkaban, they are kind of very similar. Like I like them equally somehow, but I like them equally for different reasons. And I think because Order of the Phoenix is the longest and also it's the one that has been the greatest rereading experience for me. It's just currently the book I would put on number one. Now Prison of Azkaban was always my favorite in my memory and I think it had a lot to do with me loving the movie. I still think it's a wonderful book and I I have a lot of appreciation for it just because it's always been my favorite and I think it's the book that I have the most nostalgic thoughts for because it was also the first book that I read. So I still have just a lot of love for Prison of Azkaban. I just think it's the one that I kind of love most but I think Order of the Phoenix is the best. I don't know if that makes sense. I always thought that Order of the Phoenix was really, really slow. And I think for a long time, I would have said it's my least favorite. And I know I mentioned in a few videos that I actually like the movie more. And I just, I take it all back. I think I, back then I just wanted fast paced action and I just kind of wanted Harry to face Voldemort. But now I just feel so different about it. I think that Order of the Phoenix is such a good, important book. It has so much character growth in it. It has so much important things that get revealed in it and I just appreciate the slowness of this book now and it just means so much to me that JK Rowling just took a lot of time to kind of build up relationships and to build up characters and everything like that. Also it introduces Luna Lovegood which is definitely one of my favorite characters and also this is the book that really starts making an actual interesting character out of Ginny and I think a lot of people would agree that Ginny in the movies is horrible but she's definitely another of my favorite characters and she really grew on me a lot in these rereads. And I think for all of these different things, I just really, really appreciate Order of the Phoenix. And I think Goblet of Fire is just because it's so action packed. So many like different things. It's so, it's, it's so different. I think that's also with Prison of Azkaban. Prison of Azkaban is very different because it doesn't have this Voldemort storyline at the end of it. And I think Goblet of Fire is just really cool. Like the Triwizard Tournament is such an amazing new element to this series, but then we still have this like really crazy showdown at the end of it. Also, let's just get to this. Goblet of Fire has no Quidditch. Guys, I hate Quidditch. I, 
Oh my god, like I listened to most of the audiobooks on 1.5 or 1.75 speed and then just sometimes slowed down when there was a scene that I knew I really liked. For example, I slowed down on The Prince's Tale, I slowed down on Dumbledore's Funeral. Quidditch, I always listened to on double speed because I couldn't take it. Oh, I don't understand that there's some people out there who love Quidditch because Quidditch is just boring and I couldn't give a fuck about it. As far as Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows go, I don't want to go too much into detail because I think that my current thoughts about it are way more negative than I actually feel. It's just because I just recently read it and reading both of these books was just such a like sobering experience. I was just genuinely so disappointed and I'm not really surprised, but I was still surprised by how unimpressed I was with Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows. As I was just kind of mentioned with Listening Speed, The Prince's Tale is still one of my favorite chapters. Dumbledore's Funeral is still one of my favorite parts. This is just beautiful, but I think like Half-Blood Prince, I don't even know what happened in it anymore. And same kind of goes with Deathly Hallows. I mean, in the first half, really nothing happens. They are just traveling the whole time. And it's not even really about Horcruxes, it's really just about them traveling and kind of fleeing. And yeah, I mean, I guess you could really appreciate the character development but I don't think there's much in it anymore. The people are already kind of the way they are and I don't really think much changes about them. So I kind of felt like that first half was completely unnecessary. And the funny thing is, I always really, really enjoyed the first movie. Like I always really enjoyed Deathly Hallows part one and now I didn't really enjoy the part one in the book. But then I was always really disappointed by Deathly Hallows part two, which I know is a super unpopular opinion, but I think that for being the final, the eighth movie in this super important book and film series, this movie was so underwhelming. I just think it was not well done. I mean, guys, if you had a Twilight face and you saw Breaking Dawn part two, that ending was heart-wrenching. Like, I cried my eyes out. Like, it packed a punch and then it did this thing where it had all of the characters again. And I was sobbing in the movie theater, even though at that point I was not invested in the books or the movies anymore. And still, I thought that that last movie was so well done. Harry Potter, I was hoping it would be similar and it just wasn't. The only part where I cried was The Princess Tale. I think that one is really well done. Other than that, I think Deathly Hallows Part 2 is not that great. Anyway, why am I getting into movies now? So yeah, I just think that Deathly Hallows is a little bit underwhelming. I think even the Battle of Hogwarts is way less special. And yeah, I think just this first whole part Oh my god. This is a good transition to my feelings about characters. Let's talk about the Golden Trio first and let's talk about Ronald fucking Weasley. Honestly, I'm gonna say it and you can hate me for it, but if Ron would have died in this book, I would not have been sad. I know Ron is important for Harry, for the storyline, and I know lots of people love him. I cannot stand Ron. I hate him so much and I hate him in every single book. This is not me being annoyed at him in Deathly Hallows when he freaks out because there's like evil stuff in his head or whatever. In no book did I ever think, oh, Ron is actually a really great guy. No. Ron, I'm sorry, but Ronald Weasley is the worst. He's a pain in the ass. Ron is such a pain in the ass. Oh my god. God. And I remember that I wasn't the biggest fan of him when I originally read them and I don't really care about him in the movies either But I think this time around it was even worse because this time around I was able to appreciate Harry as a character way more as I said in my original read I never really cared about the golden trio at all and that included Harry I just didn't really care about Harry I didn't really think he was an interesting character and that completely flipped like I appreciate Harry so 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 much so much so much Harry is oh my god the things he goes through and how he is able to handle all of it and sometimes not handle all of it it's amazing to me and I just think that even though I appreciate Ron as a friend for Harry I just don't appreciate a lot of the things he does and says about and to Harry I just think he's being such an asshole 
and even though I understand where he's coming from for a lot of it, I just am not here for it. I so I'm so sorry, but like Ronald Weasley Oh my god, I cannot take him and the shit he says. As far as Hermione goes, she is another character that I always just felt like very neutral about. I know lots of people really love her and were able to really connect to her and that for a lot of girls in my generation she was a huge inspiration, but I just never had that and I still don't have it. I think she is a great and interesting character, but I think we're so different. I am so very not like Hermione, so maybe that's why, because I think a lot of girls have found her really relatable, but I, I honestly, I think I relate to Harry quite a lot, especially as far as like my school life goes. You know, I don't hate Hermione at all. I really like Hermione, but she just means a lot less to me than she means to other people, which maybe that's also a reason why the series means a lot less to me than it does to other people. I think if you have like one character that you can really relate to that definitely changes your thoughts and feelings on a series and I just never really had that. Now there's a few characters where really none of my opinion changed. As I said Hermione is someone where I don't really have any different feelings towards. My feelings about Snape didn't really change. I acknowledge that he is a bully and an asshole a couple of years ago already but I still love him and nothing about that changed while rereading and I don't want to go into detail on Snape because I will just start a rant and you will start a rant in the comments and please just let me live. I love him but I also know that he's a horrible character so sometimes I just like horrible characters and that's fine. One of the things that I think is interesting is my opinion on Dumbledore because when I originally read the series Dumbledore was one of my favorite characters. I would say originally probably my favorite character were Snape and Sirius. Number two would be Dumbledore and then number three would probably have been Remus and then Luna. And then throughout the years with the movies coming out and hearing everybody's opinions on Dumbledore I just started appreciating him a lot less and I just still have that same opinion like Dumbledore is is horrible the way he treats Harry and if you look at it from an adult perspective you're just like what the fuck are you doing but I still think Dumbledore is one of the most interesting characters in this whole series and I really hope they don't fuck up his storyline in the Fantastic Beasts franchise. I also think that Dumbledore is probably my least favorite portrayal in the movies. I think that's also why I lost a lot of my love for him. I think he's not well portrayed in the movies at all. He is sometimes really fucking sassy and I love it. I think definitely Dumbledore is back to number two. Remus is interesting because I still really like him but but I would never mention him as one of my favorite characters. And Sirius, I think, is another really interesting development because he is nowhere near my favorite characters anymore. And that's kind of really, oh, that feels kind of bad and kind of horrible and kind of weird to say that. I think Sirius is a big part of why I loved the third book so much and I think I love him more in the movies actually. But actually rereading these books, I realized that we just don't learn a lot about him. We really don't know too much about him and I think why I loved him so much is because I was just so happy for Harry that he had this person and that's why I still really appreciate him and why I'm still really sad. I mean I wasn't sad when he died. I was sad when Harry had this moment where he realized what had actually happened. The way once again JK Rowling writing grief, the way he described how it all came down and how he realized oh that's what's making me sad about this whole thing. Other than that, I just don't really think Sirius is a great character. Obviously he spent a lot of time in Azkaban, so you can kind of tell that I think there's some growing up that didn't happen. And I just hate how he constantly compares Harry to James. That fucks me up so much. Same with Remus, by the way. This is also why I lost some of my appreciation for him, even though I still really like him. But like, can you fucking stop saying you're just like James or like, James never would have done this. I'm like, he's not James, he's Harry, okay? That fucked me up so many times. That made me so angry, so angry. This was also one of the points where I really realized how much I really loved Harry as a character in this reread, because this pissed me off so much. I was like, Leave him the fuck alone. Oh my god. 
I think that's kind of my most important character thoughts that I have. McGonagall is an absolute badass and I always knew that. Lucius Malfoy is precious to me and I want to protect him at all costs. I still don't really care about Draco. I still think people put him on a pedestal that he just doesn't belong. I know he couldn't really do anything about the way he was. I know that a lot of the things he does are kind of not his fault. And I agree that he deserves a redemption arc, but I still think people don't talk enough about how horrible he is to Harry, Ron and Hermione, how he treats them, what he says to them. It's really not okay. Like, I don't know, this is another like William Herondale to me. Like, just because there's reason for for what he does doesn't mean that makes it okay and everybody can be like he's fine and everything's fine like no I don't think so I do think it would be really really interesting to have the series or a few of the books from his perspective I think that would make it a lot more interesting and I think J.K. Rowling really could have done something really special and good with him at the end of the seventh book I'm really sad that she didn't kind of use that potential yeah I think that's my most important thoughts after rereading the Harry Potter series please be nice. I know I have some controversial opinions. I don't mean to offend you if you disagree or anything. What I would just really love to discuss with you as long as it's in a respectful manner. I'm so sure I'm forgetting something and I will kick myself later on. <laughs> but thank you so so much for watching and I guess I'll see you soon. Bye!